I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. And everybody said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your people. We thank you for the leadership of this state. We're asking, O oh Lord, that everyone will have the touch of the Lord tonight in Jesus' name. Lead your people to that promised land. All the good things you have for every one of us. You bring them into our lives even from tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down the beginning of a journey. Have you ever noticed in your life the end of January is the beginning of February. The end of the period of darkness in your life is the beginning of light that will shine brighter and brighter. What I'm talking about tonight, 365 days of extraordinary miracles. All the days of the coming year, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. 365 days of extraordinary miracles. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 12. You will see what the Lord is saying here. A land which the Lord thy God careth for, the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. The children of Israel were in a journey and they were going to a land of promise. They were wondering what will it be we are conscious of the past. We know about the present. But for the future, we're ignorant. We know where we're coming from. We know where we are today. But we don't know what is there in the future. We can tell you the geography of Egypt. We can tell you the wilderness experience at the present time. But we are wondering what is going to happen in the coming year, in the following year. As they thought about it, there were some of them that were ignorant. And they said, we well, remember the cucumber in Egypt. The onions of Egypt. For them, it's like, why don't we stay there? All the people were saying, we know what we get in the wilderness where we are. The water out of the rock. The manna that is coming from heaven. And the big tree that were having over the Amalekites. 
Some of them said, let's go back to Egypt and stay there. The past for them were sure of that. Other people are saying, why don't we stay here? The rock is there, the water is coming out. Why don't we stay here? And then the word of God came to them. The past may be good, the future will be better. The present may bring water out of the rock, the future will bring honey out of the rock. That's why the Lord came to assure them. And he said, a land which the Lord himself careth for. The eyes of the Lord your God always upon that land. From the very beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year, he will care for you. Hey, look at verse 21. That your days may be multiplied. And the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them. Look at the last part of that verse 21. It says, where you are going. The future that is stretched out before you. As the days of heaven upon the earth. I thought somebody there was shouting amen. As the days of heaven upon the earth. That's where you get the 365 days of extraordinary miracles. There are three things we're going to talk about. You know, there are people that think of preaching as just talking. But the preaching you are hearing tonight is a staircase, step one, step two, step three, and then you enter. The points I'm going to give you, there are points for you to say, yes, step one, I put my leg there. Step two, I put my leg there. Step three, I put my leg there. And I usher you into 365 days of extraordinary miracle. Number one, the point of entry. If a room is filled with treasure, all the good, good things you're looking for in life is in this chamber. If you may know it, you may rejoice, you may tell everybody around, look at that chamber there. Treasures are there for me. You may shout about it. You may be jumping around. Those treasures there will not be yours until, number one, the point of entry. You may say, it's a wonderful message. I like that verse of scripture. Wonderful. I didn't know that was in the Bible before. All that shouting, all that rejoicing will not do anything. Number one, take that step. The point of entry. Entry. 
Do you know there are many people that they just they sample messages? I like that. I appreciate that. That's wonderful. But they never take the step. I'm not preaching to just like that. I'm coming to you to tell you there is something waiting for you. You must enter. There's somebody there. You will enter. What are you? I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. This coming year, you, you will see wonderful. Because extraordinary miracles will come your way. Number two, the path to excellence. You know, as you enter, you will not be stagnant in this coming year. You'll be going from faith to faith. From grace to grace. From glory to glory. Where we find you in January, by February, you will move forward. And you must never look back. You must never turn back. Have you seen somebody riding motorcycle and his hands are on the handles and then he's looking back? He wants to have accidents. This coming year, you will not have accident. There are people that will try to distract your attention. They are not going anywhere. They stay here, they stay there, they stay here, they stay there. Where you find them in January, that is where they still are in May. They will be beckoning upon you. They will be telling a lot of stories. Don't look at anybody. Center your focus, your eyes on where you are going. Any noise, block your ears. Any distraction, close your eyes to them. The way to excellence. The path to excellence. You will not stop your journey halfway. You will get there. Point one, tell me. The point of entry. Point two, tell me. The path to excellence. Point number three. The partnership for exploits. You and Jesus, you are in the majority. No boat can sink if Jesus is in that boat. And there is no life that will be destroyed if Jesus is in that life. He will hold your hand. You'll be in partnership with him. Every day will be a day of exploits. Number one, the point of entry. Number two, the path to excellence. Number three, the partnership for exploits. Which is the point of entry? Is the point where you realize where you have been, you don't have the sufficiency of everything. As you are 
with yourself alone, without God, without Christ, without grace, without salvation, without peace of mind, without a future, you have been struggling all alone by yourself. You have struggled for long. And yet you are not hitting. You are not getting water where you are digging. It is time for you to understand. The treasure is in that chamber. And Jesus has the key. He says, I am the door. By me, if anyone will enter in, he will find pasture. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way to true life. He says, why are you outside there? He says, come in. For all things are ready. All your prosperity is in the hand of Christ. Your protection in the hands of Christ. Your possibilities in life in the hands of Christ. And he says, why are you outside there? There's darkness outside. There's danger outside. There's insecurity outside. That is a Satan that is walking about seeking who may be devour. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come. I came for you. That you might have life. And that you might have that life more abundantly. Why are you still waiting outside? Why don't you say, this is my day. This is my point of entry. He says, I'm standing at your door and I'm knocking. I come to bless you. Have you looked at all the people that Jesus touched when he was here? He never hurt anybody. He never condemned anybody. He never drove anybody away. He never put a bad stigma on anybody. What he was the most the most common word he said. Come. 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 And that's what he's still saying today. Why will you not be wise? While Jesus is calling you. And he's saying this is the point of entry. Leave that darkness outside and come to the light. He is the light of the world. Life is bitter without Christ. But Jesus Christ makes your life better. That's why he's calling you. And he says, you must take this first step at the point of entry. In Luke, Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Here is what the Lord is saying to you. In Luke chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 17. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidding, here is the word, come for all things are now ready. Come out. Come in. Come out of darkness. Come into the light. Come out of idol worship. And come to Jesus, the only Savior. Come out of that occultism. 
and come into the true power, transforming power of the Almighty God. Come out of your shame, out of your sorrow, come out of your suffering and come into the joy of the Lord. Come out of condemnation. Sin condemns us. Come out of that condemnation and come into justification, into salvation. Come out of your sickness and come into his health. Come out of your bondage and come out and come into his freedom. Come for all things are now ready. Point number one. The point of entry. Point number two. The path to excellence. You know, there are people in life that they could be up there, but they are down here. The Lord created you for something good. That's why he has reserved some promises for you. And he said, you will be head, you will not be tail. I thought it is his state will say, Amen. He said, you will be forward only, you will not be backward. He's saying, you will be extraordinary, you will not be ordinary. You will not just be somebody, I came, I came, I came. If you look at some chapters in Genesis, and you look at some chapters in First Chronicles, they mentioned many, many names. He was born. He gave birth to others. Then he's gone. Birth. Begetting. Bereavement. Just one sentence in their lives. Even with Josella. He came. He had children. It's gone. Nothing about their lives. The people got made in his own image. Let us make man in our image. At our likeness. Let them have dominion. He created you for dominion. He created you for authority. He created you for power. He created you to be on the mountain top. He created you to have a shining light all through your life. He created you for a life of excellence. But there is no excellence without a journey, without moving on. Show me a student. That student entered in form one. And there's no progress, no path, no journey. Just staying in that form one. Excellence will not come. In our lives, many of us will stay in one class. There's no progress. There's no past. There's no plan. There's no project. There is nothing to say, I am here this month, I'll be there next month. I'm here this year, I'll be over there next year. There's no path to excellence. This coming year for you will be a year of progress. 
but my brother, my sister, if there's going to be progress, you know what we do? We take inventory of the present time. We say, this is what I have. This is what I have. This is what I've done. This is what I possess. We take inventory of the present time. We look ahead. We make a plan. We search a goal. We look at the resources we have. We look at what God wants to make of our lives. We search our focus on that goal, that destiny. Then we look for the road that goes from here to there. And every day of the coming year, you will not be tired. I said you will not be tired. One step at a time. 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 Do you know that little drops of water make a mighty ocean? Do you know that a step, a step, a step, you will get there? I'm looking for somebody who will get there. I said I'm looking for somebody who will get there. I prophesy upon your life. That place the Lord wants to take you in the new year. You will get there in Jesus' name. What one word can I give you? That will summarize together the path to excellence. Before I give you that word. What one word should I have given you? That will summarize the point of entry. The word is calm. Don't stay there. Calm. Don't stay in darkness. Calm. Something is waiting for you. What one word can I give you now for point number two? The path to excellence. Continue. Tell me. I can't hear you. You will continue. You know, this coming year, the goal is already before you. The mountain top is before you. The devil will say, are you not tired? Remember one word. Tell yourself that word. Continue. Other people will make fun of you. Holy, holy. Madam Mary. Church, church. Deeper, deeper. Don't listen to them. When they say that, tell yourself one word. Tell me. Continue. You will feel weary and tired. You will hear people tell stories about you. Where did they get that story? They are telling lies against me. They will persecute. They will do a lot of things. Something will tell you. There is no point continuing. These people, they are ingrates. They don't appreciate any good thing. I lay my life down for them so that I can move forward. I can move them forward. Satan will try to tell you, sit down. Why are you bothering yourself? That day, that time, remember. Those who sit down, they never get to excellence. Those who are discouraged and they say, I cannot move, they don't get to the mountain top. 
you will tell yourself one word. Give it to me. Continue. You know, that's how you get to excellence. That's how you will make it. You will make it. I said you will make it. Let me show you. Let me show you. Luke chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 28. Luke chapter 22 verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me. In my temptations. Temptations may come. Trials may come. Troubles may come. Ye are they which have continued with me. And I appoint unto you a kingdom. You know, that's how you are going to get. It's the word continue. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8 verse 31. I'm telling you, this is the word. You need. Don't sit down. Don't sit. Don't, don't look back. Don't get this. Call it. If you get, if you get this, you sit down. Other people that didn't have enough as much intelligence as you have, because they continue, they continue, they continue. They will pass you. They will hold. They will take your promise. Nobody will take your place. <laughs> John chapter 8 verse 31 then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him if ye continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed you will continue discouragement will not stop you Satan will not stop you. Evil spirit will not stop you. And all those people with their insinuations and lies and everything, nobody will stop you. Have you ever thought about something? Anybody who has the power to stop you is stronger than you are. You thought you were strong. And then a little boy takes a broomstick and say, I will beat you. And surprisingly, you stop. That means that little boy with that little broomstick is stronger than you are. It's not what you say. It's your action. Anybody that is able to stop you is stronger than you are. You will not stop. First Timothy chapter four, verse sixteen. It says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them. How do you get to that place of excellence? Because you continue. Am I talking to somebody who will continue? I say, can I see the person there will continue? You will reach that point of excellence in Jesus' name. Number one, the point of entry. Number two, the path to excellence. Number three, partnership for exploits. Partnership for exploits. Look up here. You say, I don't know anything. I don't have anything. I am weak. 
I am small. You know, if you are, if you write the letter or the figure zero, and you make it round like this, when you look at that number all alone by itself, zero, nothing. There is another number here, one. Are you following me? Where are you? Are you following me? You have one. You have zero. If that zero stands alone, that's all he is. Move. Come. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. And when you reach the side of one and you are in partnership together, one, zero, what is that? Jesus said, all power on earth and in heaven is given unto me. If you are zero, he is whole and unit integral. And you bring your zero life, you bring your zero possession, you bring your zero strength, you bring it to Jesus, it makes 10. You will get to that place of excellence. He said, come and abide. Come and stay with me. I will not leave you on my own path. No matter what happens to you, I will not leave you. If you are weak, I will take you up. If you have any weakness, I will strengthen you. If you have any challenge, I am interceding, praying for you. If you are tired, I will carry you. If Satan is running after you, I will defend you. If temptation comes, I will show you the way to have triumph and victory. On my own side, I will never leave you. It is for you to also have a reciprocal statement and promise. As he said, he will never leave you. You say, I myself too, I will never leave my Jesus. I will stay with him because zero at the side of one makes ten. He will be with you. This coming year will be a wonderful year. All your needs, they will supply. Look at Isaiah chapter 41. The promise he has made for you. And he says, he's with you. He's not going to leave you. He will not forsake you. How can he forsake you? He died for you. He paid the price of your salvation. And he said, whosoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading from verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. This Jesus is with you. Almighty God is with you. He goes up, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I was waiting for an amen there. Jeremiah chapter 1. 
Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 19. I'm, I'm going to wait for you. This one, we need to breathe well before we read it. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 19. You know, next year is ready, prepared for you to succeed. The powers that conquered you before, that's in the past. This coming year, victory after victory. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 19. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee. You see the partnership. You see coming to the Lord and staying with the Lord. You see that he's going to hold your hand. He's going to take you there. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. I am delivered, praise the Lord. I am delivered by his blood. I am delivered, you are delivered. He will never leave you. Once you come, you continue, you conquer. You come, number one. You continue. Number two. Tell me number three. You are more than a conqueror. Look at this in Jeremiah. And I'm reading from chapter 15. I'm reading verse 21. I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. Anybody, they call it Mr. Terror, Mr. Terrible, Mr. Danger. God has delivered you. And this is what you have but when you have a coming to partnership with the Lord. That's how this coming year will be. 365 days of extraordinary miracles upon your life. Hold on to those three words. Number one, come. Number two, continue. Number three, conquer. I see conquerors here tonight. I see overcomers here tonight. You will conquer sin. You will conquer sickness. You will conquer Satan. You will conquer darkness. You will conquer poverty. You will conquer death. Death coming here. Long life. I'm talking about somebody there. Long life. Long life. Anything that will hinder your health and your strength and your power, tonight Jesus will deal with that thing. The day and the time of exploit is beginning right now for you. This coming year is going to be a prosperous year. It's going to be a happy year. It's going to be the best year you have ever lived in your life. And when I see you again, I said I will see you again. What are you there? When I see you again, the person that never laughed, you will laugh. 
You never smiled, you will smile. The fire burning in the family is quenched. The sickness raging in your body is healed. The powers of darkness trying to torment you to tear you apart. I send that evil spirit away. And the food you could not eat. Now I release you go and eat. Something good is starting. Uh, you are standing up to get it already. You are even faster than I thought. I said you are faster than I thought. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. But you must take the first step. The point of entry. The point of entry. The Lord Jesus is telling you. Come, all things are now ready. Come, all things are now ready. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you want to get into this provision of Christ, this salvation of Christ, you want to start at the point of entry. You say, Jesus, I give my life to you. I'm going to be a child of God. I come. I come out of my sin. I come out of darkness. I come out of evil. I come to Jesus, my Savior. Wherever you are, raise up that hand. That hand will be a blessed hand. You are telling the Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Raise up that hand. The Lord has seen that hand. Just quietly tell him over there where you are. I come out of my sin. I come to the Savior. I come out of idolatry. I come to the true and the living God. I come out of occultism. I come to the pure power of Christ. I come out of evil and wickedness and crime. I come to the cross of Jesus Christ. I come away from condemnation. I come to his salvation and justification. Lord Jesus, receive me. He has received you. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all these who have now taken the step at the point of entry. Forgive all their sins in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, the conscience of sin, the condemnation of sin, the guilt, take it away from them in Jesus' name. Give them peace in their hearts. Forgiveness and pardon in their hearts. And give them the grace to go and live in newness of life. Welcome them into your kingdom. At this point of entry, I pray, Lord, every one of them will enter in to the grace of God, to the salvation of God. I thank you because I know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. God has answered your amen. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. God bless you. You are standing up. Let's stand up together. If you cannot stand up now after the final amen, you'll be able to stand up. Now, the Lord wants to set us free from anything that will keep us back from going into this wonderful year ahead of us. 
If you are blind today, it will open your blind eyes. If you are lame, you will rise up and walk. And you brought a child who is uh, you are sorrowful because of that child, deaf and dumb. The Lord will heal that child tonight. Any attack, any affliction you have in your body tonight, Jesus has come to set you free. And after the final amen, that means it is so. And then you open your eyes, you discover the miracle. Are you ready now? You raise up one hand and if you can lead the other hand where you have the challenge, you have the problem, the sickness, your healing has come. We are ready to pray now. After the final amen, check up yourself. The healing is there. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name tonight. You have given us a promise that cannot fail. That whatsoever we ask in the name of Jesus shall be granted. Lord, we believe you cannot fail. You will not fail. You will touch everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every work of the devil will be destroyed. Every affliction of the enemy will be taken away. All the activities of the terrible one in their lives, I nullify them right now. Lord, I pray all those powers of darkness neutralize them in Jesus' name. Any evil power there, any evil spirit there, any spirit of infirmity there, any spirit of madness there, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Anything that is swollen in your body, whether it is an ear or it is the bullet, it's the bullet of the evil people. I command all the swelling come out in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis, I command you come out in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. All shall be healed in Jesus' name. Those kidneys and those livers, I command you, receive resurrection power right now. Appendicitis, immediate healing right now in Jesus' name. And all that pile, I pray the Lord touch you right now. Go in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are blind. Those blind eyes, I command you, be open and begin to see Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, I pray that your ears will be open now. Your tongue will be loose right now. Hear and speak in Jesus' name. Those who are paralyzed, one leg shorter than the other, any part of the body withered, or you're having stroke, Lord, I pray right now, let your healing power come upon them. Strength come upon them. The power to activate their bodies right now in Jesus' name. Lord, every miracle that is needed here, I send forth your power. I send forth the anointing. 
I manifest that authority in the name of Jesus. Set your people free in Jesus' name. Heal all the sick in Jesus' name. Turn their lives around for the better in Jesus' name. Receive your healing now. Receive your deliverance now. Receive your miracle now. You are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. You got it. I said you got it. I said you got it. Check up yourself. Your miracle is right there with you. It is, it is done. Amen. You are listening to our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye, or other anointed minister of God from our ministry. Let the words sink in your heart and they will do you good throughout your whole life. It is our belief by the grace of the Lord that you will come and worship with us at Deeper Life Bible Church. But number 4656 Bravo Drive. We have our service every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11.30. And we have our Bible study on every Monday from 7 to 8.30. As you are doing so, and the grace of the Lord will continue to be with you and you will never be the same. Thank you. God bless you.